Hi, I'm Dick Eit with Bites by Eit. We cater to the exceptional clientele along the eastern coastline, from Manhattan to Greenwich, up to Nantucket, down to Florida, Vero Beach, Boca Raton, and we're based in Atlanta, Georgia. We create simple restaurant quality food that you can make for your family and your guests. So we're gonna do our fan favorites, the bites that everyone loves to eat. So let's get started. So for today, we're gonna to do twice cooked, hand cut French fries with a aioli mayonnaise sauce. Then we're gonna do zucchini dredged in panko and then dipped into a homemade ranch dressing. So let's get started. So we're gonna cut the potatoes. And again, take your time on cutting the potatoes. Just cut one end off. Now we have a nice stable surface to work with so there's, there's no accidents. And what we're trying to do here is when I pick the potatoes, I try to make them so they're oblong, rectangular in shape, so it's uh, easier. I don't really care about having the skin on or not having the skin on when I cut them by hand. I do want the potatoes to be uniformly cut, so they'll be uniformly cooked. Okay, so there we go. Cut off the ends. And this end, and now we have a nice little rectangle, okay? Throw out these scraps. Lay it on its side. I like to cut it maybe a quarter of an inch thick. Whatever you do, just cut it so it's the same size. I don't like it too thin because I like to have a little bit of meat to it. And we're also gonna be cooking it twice. The first time we cook the french fries, we'll cook it through for about six, seven minutes at about 250 degrees, 275. And the second time we cook it, we will cook it at about 375 up to 400 or so. And that will get it nice and crispy. And the reason we do it first is we're gonna cook the potato. The second time, it will be crispy. There we go, okay. Again, when we cut it, about the same width. And you can see the thickness and they're all about the same size. Now you can also, after they've been cut, you can soak them half an hour to an hour in water and that will get out some of the starch. And after you do that, you'll want to dry them so uh, the water doesn't interfere with the oil. The oil that we're using today is peanut oil. Um, you could use corn oil, oil or vegetable oil, but I like the peanut oil. That's what Five Guys Burgers does. They use the, the peanut oil, has good flavor. Some places will do two types of oils. I think this turns out fine. And the other key to it is that we do it in small batches. You don't do a lot. So when we're going to uh, cook them, we'll put in a handful at a time and, uh, and then take them out, let them rest. And then after they've cooled down a little bit, then we'll cook them the second time. So we've got the potatoes ready. And now I'll do the zucchini. Same thing with the zucchini. You can see that they're all uh, rectangular in shape. We'll get one end. So it's a flat surface to work with. And we'll cut it down. So it's uniform. Sort of like how we, in previous shows, have done the, the salmon. It's just important to have everything cut with the same thickness. Okay. So I'm going to cut this, make two cuts out of it. Take your time. There's no rush here. So now we have our zucchini ready to go. We have our potatoes ready to go. So we're gonna cook this first at about 275, 300 degrees. So let's go back there and cook these off. Okay, here we go. So one of the most important things, other piece of equipment that I use besides my baking steel is my thermometer gun. It takes the guesswork out of it, especially when you're frying. So I'll just shoot this it's 306 degrees, which is, which is fine. 
uh, it knows what I'm working in. When I take the french fries, just put them in, you can either singly, you can put a couple in there. Don't drop it in. You don't want to make a splash. The oil is a little warm. There we go. So I put half, about half that batch in there is about all we need to do, okay? You can also, um, when it's in the oil, you can move it around a little bit. One, it won't stick. Uh, you can see it's starting to, to, to uh, bubble up a little bit. And by moving it back and forth, it, uh, it helps circulate and keep them from getting, from sticking from the bottom and also keep them uh, so there's oil always around it equally. So when we put it in, the oil was at 306 degrees and we put the couple of potatoes in there and now it's dropped down to 272. So that's a good temperature for it to be cooking at. So I start a little bit higher and then uh, finish it off. It'll be cooking at about 275, which is a, a good number to be at. You'll want to do it, cook them until they're a little bit uh, translucent. And again, it'll take five to seven minutes and we're gonna take them out, let them rest, cool down a little bit, put the oil back up and get it at a higher temperature and then we'll finish it off at the higher temperature. So let's go back and make the uh, zucchini. We'll dredge it in the flour, the egg and the panko and then we'll make the ranch dressing and the aioli mayonnaise. Okay, so now the french fries are cooking Temperatures drop down about 258 degrees. We'll let it cook for about five to seven minutes. In the meantime, we'll prepare the zucchini with the panko. So we'll take it and dredge it in flour. And then after the flour, we'll put it in the egg wash, and then we'll put it in the panko. Now I do it all with uh, one step at a time, because once I put my hands into the egg wash and into the panko, it's gonna get really sticky. It's like a kid's project. And we're ready for the next step, okay? Take the excess off, get it nice and wet, put it in the panko, definitely give it a good coating of the panko so it's all covered. Turn it around, press it into it, and then we'll put it onto the platter. Again, the egg, get it well coated. You can see how messy your hands get already. I like panko. It's a little bit lighter, has more flavor than using uh, breadcrumbs. Um, that's just my preference. It turns out well. I do uh, fried chicken. I did uh, one of my clients 60th birthday. And besides doing the, the crab cakes, lamb chop lollipops, the stone crabs from Joe's in Miami. He wanted fried chicken, french fries, and uh, fried zucchini in panko. So I brought out three of those big Bunsen burners, like when you make a turkey, and had two chefs working that. Uh, did a great job doing uh, those three items for him. It was, it was a big hit. So there's three. So let me clean my hands off, and we'll go and check on the french fries. Okay, temperature-wise, uh, 269. So it's come up a little bit in temperature, and you can see how it's uh, cooked nicely. They're a little bit translucent. They're a little bit cooked. The temperature has been held up nicely. If we were to put too many french fries in there, the temperature would drop down to below 250, 230, 220. And at that point in time, it's, it's just not enough heat to uh, cook it and we don't want too much oil absorbed into the potatoes. So you can also see that the potatoes are floating to the top, so that means it's pretty good. I'll take it out and keep them separated. So all of the, uh, all of the excess oil comes out. I'm going to juice the temperature up a little bit. So when we do the, uh, the french fries and the uh, zucchini, we'll be at a higher temperature. So let me just raise this up and I'll put it up to high and get it up to temperature 
and once I get to the desired temperature, a little bit more than the desired temperature, then I'll, I'll put the french fries in. I'll do the french fries first. If I were to do the zucchini, then I'd have all the panko crumbs in the oil. So when I did that big party, we had a separate uh, fryer for the french fries and we had two fryers, one for the panko zucchini and the panko uh, chicken. So we keep it separate. This we're only using one, so we want to do the french fries first. So I turned it up to high. We'll give it a quick scope. And it's already at 309. So I'd like to get it up to about uh, 375 to 400 degrees. It won't take long. Let's just clean this up a little bit and we'll wait for that to come temperature. Okay, so whenever we're cooking with oil on the stovetop, don't ever turn your back on it. Don't ever turn your back on the ocean. Don't ever turn your back on the oil. So I brought it up to temperature. It's about 427 degrees. Now it's 430, okay? We're gonna make the ranch dressing and the garlic aioli. So I'm gonna turn down the heat and then I'm gonna move this onto the back burner so it doesn't get any higher. The danger we have here is if the oil gets too hot, it'll go to a smoking point and then it'll go to a flaming point. And if that were to ever happen, just put something over it to uh, cut out the air. Don't ever put water on it, it'll just spread it. But be very careful whenever you're cooking in oil. Okay, so now we're gonna make the uh, aioli garlic mayonnaise with a little bit of Old Bay's in there. You can do it one of two ways. You can do it the cheating way, the easy way. Just take a nice mayonnaise. I have an avocado oil mayonnaise. You can make the mayonnaise from scratch if you want to, but I just take a mayonnaise and add the garlic, add a little mustard, add a little bit of Old Bay's and use that. You can serve it with ketchup too, but uh, the aioli mayonnaise really adds a little extra something to it. We'll do the garlic. Smash it down, take out the pith. And with this amount of mayonnaise, I'll probably just do one clove of garlic. Let's get that out of there. Good. Cut off the end where the pith was. I'm searching for the pith. I can see the end of the tail to it. And there it is right there. Take that out. So it's really not that much garlic to it, you can see but uh, enough to add some good flavor to it. We'll do a nice chop on it. Probably chop it up finer than we normally do since we're not putting this in a Cuisinart. If you were making the mayonnaise uh, from scratch, you wouldn't have to worry about doing such a fine chop. I really want small pieces, so just do a nice job chopping this up. I always put my hand on top of the knife, go toe to heel so I don't have to worry about ever coming into danger of um, cutting my fingers. Okay, put the garlic in there. Put the mayonnaise in there. I like a little bit of Old Bay's in there. It gives it a little extra flavor. It's good color. It's great flavor. A little bit of a pop, because you know, potatoes aren't that flavorful. So you want to add a little spice to it. Again, this is something you can ask your clients, your family, your guests, how they feel about spice, how they feel about garlic, how much to put in there. The last thing I'll put in there is <clears throat> a little bit of mustard. So whenever I do mustard, I really like whole grain mustard seeds. I like the crunch of the seeds in there. I like the look and feel of it. You could use regular, you know, Dijon mustard. That really adds just another level of flavor and excitement to the uh, dish. Mix this up here, and there we have it. Aioli mayonnaise, whole grain mustard, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of Old Bay's. Okay, let's move on to the next one, and that's gonna be our ranch dressing. So, you could buy ranch dressing out of the store, but this is gonna take us maybe five minutes to make. So why not make it from scratch, make it special, your guests and your family will really appreciate the uh, extra step that you took. A little dill and chop that up. A rough chop, 
to a fine chop, it will, uh, the finer you chop it, the, the better the aroma. I can already smell it. It smells fantastic. There we go. Okay, we got that. Put that in the bowl. Now we're going to add a little uh, sour cream and buttermilk to it. And that's it. We'll season it with salt and pepper. So that's about a cup of sour cream and about two, three ounces of buttermilk. Mix this around, get that in there, the extra dill. Of course, we're going to spice it up, a little sea salt, ground black pepper, and there you go. Simple, right? And it's a lot better than buying it from the store. There you go. Homemade ranch dressing, homemade aioli, sort of homemade. A little bit of a cheat there, but it's all good. Let's go to the french fries. So let's give this a test. So we're at 460 degrees. It's a good temperature to finish off the french fries. Get them nice and crispy. Put them in carefully. No splashing. Don't get yourself burnt with the hot oil. And these will take about two minutes and they'll brown up nicely and they won't take long. I can already see the brownness coming to it. Small batches and a lot of oil. Look at that. That's, they've been in for what, 30 seconds? Tops. Keep stirring it around. I can feel the, uh, the crispness to it. So let's take them out. Place them on paper, helps absorb the excess grease. Twice cooked, hand cut french fries, ready to go. Let's check the temperature now and see how much it's dropped down to. So it was at 465, 470, now it's uh, 460 on the button. We'll do the zucchini. We'll move this a little bit closer. Drop it in very carefully. Hear that? Oh, that's nice. That's three. I'll do one more. If you do too much, it will boil over and make a mess. So better to do small batches than big batches. And these won't take long to cook. The coloring is great. The panko is staying on because we pressed it into the zucchini. And we're going to take it out. Great coloring. Just let it drip a little bit. Again, if you're going to do this for a party, I'd recommend just getting a larger pot. Uh, when I do it, I do it outside with those big Bunsen burners, how you make you know, the, the turkeys in the fryer. One of those things, you can buy at any kind of Home Depot store um, along with the pot. So there we go. So we'll come over, we'll plate it up, and we're good to go. So we finished frying. The first thing I did after that is I turned the heat off. Okay, we don't want to keep the, the heat on the oil. Now I can turn my back to it and not have to worry. Let's plate up the dressing, give it a little stir. That one's good. Pour it into a little bowl for dipping. That one's good. And let's get the uh, aioli mayonnaise for the french fries and the other. Give that a little stir and put this in the bowl. It's a nice coloring. Your guests can tell that it's not just regular mayonnaise because of the yellowness. Let's plate up the panko fried zucchini and the french fries. 
When I do this for large parties, I have those uh, cone shaped cylinders and I put the newspaper in there and it has a little holder for the condiments. And I have, probably have about a dozen of those things. So we, we fill it up and we pass it around and it's very uh, French-like. French fried zucchini and panko. Twice cooked, hand cut French fries. Aioli mayonnaise, homemade ranch dressing. Easy to do, big crowd pleaser. You can make them in batches and your guests will love it. They'll be amazed how good they are. Want to thank our sponsors, uh, Rugged Road Outdoor, Calavito Olive Oil, and Baking Steel. And to get the product here safely, S.C. E. Johnson's uh, Ziploc bags. So thanks, enjoy, and we'll see you in the next show.